All right, YouTube, in a bombshell new report, Hillary Clinton used the same tax loophole that Donald Trump did. So did in uh, the New York Times, as you probably saw earlier. Now, I say that only because the New York Times considers Trump taking a loss and using that to offset uh, his income taxes is a bombshell report and not just yellow journalism, which it is. Uh, clearly, taking advantage of the tax code to pay as little as possible is what an intelligent and sane individual does. It's not what a greedy individual does. Uh, the fact is that uh, the two often overlap anyway. I think on that we can all agree. Uh, I think the problem with the Trump 1995 tax leak, so you know, Trump took such a loss and he's greedy and horrible, I think the problem with that is that the same logic was not actually applied to other people within the campaign, including, of course, at the New York Times, which actually got a rebate despite making millions and millions of dollars uh, specifically uh, because they use similar loopholes, in fact, because they're an actual business as opposed to someone who's using businesses. Uh, they, they appear to be able to actually gain money, uh, additional income, pay less than nothing. They actually pay a negative amount and they get money back. Uh, this is the problem within the mainstream media during this election. It's not that they're pointing out a candidate has done something wrong or something unscrupulous or unethical, or in the case of Trump's tax returns, something uh, that they loosely associate with his unwillingness to release the rest of his returns from more recent years. That's not the problem. The problem is that nobody in the media, this is the left and right, appears to be applying the same reasoning, applying the same scruples, applying the same muckraking, so-called, which is really just a hatchet job after hatchet job uh, sort of thing, uh, to the other candidate who's involved. Uh, the same media groups that would criticize, for instance, Johnson for not knowing where Aleppo is, have no problem with the fact that Hillary Clinton gloated about and, and laughed about Gaddafi being ousted and what happened to Libya thereafter. Um, the same groups that say, well, Trump uh, might be dangerous, he might start a war or something uh, because of the things that he says, have completely ignored the fact that Clinton has talked openly about invading Iran, actually planning to do that. You haven't heard it from the mainstream media. As a result, a lot of her fans aren't even, I think, aware of the fact that she has openly proclaimed that she wants to do that. A Hillary Clinton presidency will lead us to war with Iran, I believe, possibly with Russia and China as well, which would bring about essentially the annihilation of mankind, at least if you assume that because of her ego, she wouldn't listen to her advisors. Uh, I, I think Trump probably didn't get where he was without doing so. Clinton, of course, was essentially was appointed by Obama to the Secretary of State position. So she didn't do anything to earn that. She was never qualified. Uh, she happened to be the wife of a president, therefore first lady. And as far as, as, far as the Senate went, it was a do-nothing career in the Senate other than voting in favor, again, of another war in Iraq, uh, which people also overlook. Um, that was one of the problems at the first debate. The same moderator that was constantly browbeating Trump saying, oh, well, you know, you disrespect women, you won't release your tax returns, blah, 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 never spoke once about many of the th similar things that plague the Clinton campaign. It was unfair. It was biased, quite clearly. You don't have to be, you wouldn't have to be a Trump fan to understand this. That being said, I still think Lester Holt did a better job than most would because uh, there were actually questions there that weren't hatchet jobs. I would have expected it would be essentially just the bash Trump hour from stem to stern. But for the New York Times to pretend that a 20-year-old tax return is relevant to the election, uh, while ignoring its own use of the same loopholes it criticizes Trump for, ignoring the fact that Clinton a couple years ago was using the same loopholes is rather strange. It doesn't matter that the amount is lower. She's still in the same bracket as Trump. Um, I do find it funny that someone who supposedly left the White House broke is now worth some somewhere around, I think, $50 million or something like that. That comes from donors uh, who pay $10,000 uh, per hour to listen to her speak, essentially. I'm not sure why half of that time she spends coughing or deriding people as deplorable or basement dwellers or something like that. And we still have Roger Stone proclaiming that on Wednesday her campaign is over. We'll see what happens. It could be a complete bluff. It could just be Roger Stone decided to uh, take LSD again or something like he did 30, 40 years ago. But we'll see what happens. 
But uh, I thought it was interesting. This is from Zero Hedge. You know, not usually one of my go-to news sources, but at the same time, they obviously hate Hillary as much as the New York Times hates Trump. And what's good for the gander, I guess, is good for the goose. Hillary used the same loopholes. The New York Times used the same loopholes. So why is it an issue? Why is the media solely fixated on, well, Trump is dodging taxes, supposedly, through corporate loopholes? Well, no shit. Anybody who's wealthy, any business does the same thing. That's the problem. The problem is that a large business or an extremely wealthy individual with a team of lawyers and accountants can do this. They can pay nothing. They can get money back despite making millions of dollars. Yeah, it's a problem. As opposed to somebody like myself, the, the self-employed individual or a small business owner who can't hire an army of lawyers and accountants. That's the problem. If you look at Trump's proposed tax code, he would, in essence, be screwing his own bracket of income. He'd be screwing his own capability to go back into the private market. The, the larger corporations and firms and figures, people who are worth tens or hundreds of millions or maybe billions of dollars, the screws would be put to them. The wealthy that are getting a tax break under his sort of restructuring of the upper levels of the corporate tax code are people who are counted in that bracket but who are gainfully and productively employed, self-employed, small business owners, maybe farmers, things like that. These people are counted in many cases. Unfortunately, they are taxed at that highest income bracket. It doesn't make sense. That, again, is the problem. The tax code as it is doesn't make sense. People who make a salaried wage almost invariably pay less, even if they actually take home the same amount. They're paying a far lower rate than somebody who owns a small business, you know, a ma and pop auto garage or, or a grocery chain or something like that. That, it's not fair. It's not a fair tax system. Hillary Clinton's constantly ranting about fairness, but she has proposed not one meaningful change other than increasing the tax rate on the highest bracket, but that's not gonna affect her or Trump or the New York Times. They'll use the same loopholes. They won't pay a penny more. They'll still get money back or pay nothing. That's the point. Her tax plan has it was tried by Bubba Bill. He implemented the same so-called reform she's talking about, raising the upper in, uh, levels of the income tax bracket, raising their taxes. Did we get any significant, meaningful amount more money? No, because at the same time, that's when half the loopholes were born. That's the problem. So if you want tax reform, oddly enough, <clears throat> Trump wants to apparently cause his children, who will inherit all of his wealth, to pay more taxes. Well, that doesn't sound like somebody who's really that self-absorbed and egotistical. But when Hillary Clinton says the rich have to pay more, she includes herself in there but intends to use the same loopholes that she'd never do away with, then it just becomes a hollow promise, the same as, oh, I'll get rid of Citizens United. No, you won't. You won't do a damn thing about it, because Citizens United is why you're wealthy. It's why your party has maintained power uh, for some level of time. It's never going to happen. It's an empty campaign promise from a career politician. Uh, like I said, and I have to keep pointing this out, don't mistake my disdain for everything Clinton for a deep-seated love of Trump. I see through his game, too. Most of what he says is propaganda. But as far as his tax code goes, I have reason to believe he would implement it because he wants to be remembered as great, it would, honestly, his tax plan would cause the economy to shoot through the stratosphere. That's my summation of the situation, because it would unbridle small businesses, they would begin to grow, they would compete more, I believe in free markets, it's just the way that I am, I observe reality and I say that that would work. It would certainly help uh, self-employed individuals like myself, uh, a great deal. Uh, it's, part of this is self-serving, under Trump's tax plan, I'd be paying nothing, essentially. I'd, I'd have to make several times as much as I make now to pay a penny in income taxes. I'd be doing fine. Under Clinton's tax code, though, uh, at, at a, a fairly sh small level of income, a person who's self-employed gets the screws put to them because they're paying the top tax rate. Unless they incorporate themselves and use those same loopholes. Well, unfortunately, a person in that bracket probably can't hire a bunch of lawyers and accountants to figure out how they can do that. They're not going to, and, and even if they do, okay, well, you save 5000 in taxes, but you paid accountants and lawyers 4000 of that, so screw you. It's just, a, it's just a way for a bunch of idiot middlemen to exist that don't even need to exist. There shouldn't even have to be tax lawyers in this country. 
our tax code shouldn't be so burdensome. It should be a one-page tax form, and that's it. should be able to fill it out online like they do in Estonia. That's what we should uh, move towards. It should be a simple three-bracket flat system. Only deductions are your family. No business deductions. Couple the corporate tax rate to personal income tax. Lower it all significantly. Uh, raise the cap at which people can exist before they pay anything. Eliminate the payroll tax and implement instead, and get rid of property taxes too, except for on commercial and industrial developments, residential taxes. Uh, there shouldn't be a, a property tax on somebody's primary residence until it's at a certain value. If they've got like a $10 million home, okay, that makes sense. If somebody has one home, no, I wouldn't tax it, honestly. It's their primary residence. It's their homestead. It's theirs. It belongs to them. They shouldn't have to pay rent to the government to live there. Um, and second homes, you tax them more, and that's how you make up the difference. Therefore, uh, those that are more wealthy, uh, they probably wouldn't build second homes. Implement a national sales tax in the place of all of these other convoluted taxes. It'd be much more simple. You could have three extant taxes in the entire tax code. You could slim it all down by 99%, flatten it all out, make it truly fair, make it truly work so that the productive members of society don't keep getting screwed. Trump is proposing something roughly akin to this. Clinton's not. So I do certainly endorse his fiscal plan. That's about all. Peace out.